Hey everybody, Ray here. If you're a pickleball player, you're going to understand the need for wanting to be able to organize your paddles for people who are waiting to play. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a paddle rack that's fairly easy, very inexpensive, and works very efficiently. If that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around. I'll show you how I do this. And don't forget, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So to make your pickleball paddle rack, you're really just going to have to do a very simple and easy project and an inexpensive project. What you'll need is a 1x8 board. On, I just used common pine. It's the least expensive pine you could get. Just watch that it doesn't have a lot of big knots in it where it might cause you problems where you put your holes for your paddle. Like I said, it's a 1x8, so it's 7.5 inches deep. So you need a 37 inch piece, and I'll explain why it's such an odd measurement, and then you need a 24 inch piece. The 37 inch piece looks like this, and you'll notice that I notched off the corners here because eventually I'll go around this with a router. You might want to just sand them off because I don't want sharp edges for kids to bump their heads into if they're running by the racks. Now on that 37 inch board, what I did was, I measured from the front of the board to where I want the center of my hole, and I drew a line across this way at two and a half inches. So I drew that all the way across the board. This has room for 11 paddles, so in order for them to be fairly equally placed on this board, I came in from the side and I measured three and a quarter inches. Then from that mark, I measured every three inches and that's where the center of my holes will be. The holes are made with a two inch hole saw which gives adequate room for the paddles to slip down in there and then each one of these holes will have an inch in between them so the paddles won't be too close and banging against each other. The next thing you will need is a 24 inch piece of that same 1x8 board. And what you'll do with that, I have one here that's partially completed, is if you look at that this way, this is the front here, so this is where your paddles would go. On the back, you attach that other 24 inch part. And what that does is when you attach this to the fence, it gives it something to keep it nice and straight against the fence. If you didn't have that, then what would happen is, as you put paddles in, this piece would want to lean down like that. So you kind of need this piece here for the structure. The last piece that I'm going to use is this 36 inch aluminum rod. And you might need a couple of other little scrap pieces. I've got, uh, this looks like about an inch and a quarter dowel here that I'm going to cut some pieces off of that and that's what I'll use to make my little bead to go back and forth on this rod. You can make that out of a little square piece of wood. Whatever scrap you've got laying around will probably work just fine. So you can see here that I've already done one hole using the hole saw. And bonus, you get yourself a little wheel out of the deal. So essentially all you do is line your drill bit up with your mark. Start it off slowly. And there you go. You get yourself a nice clean hole. So once you've got all of your two inch holes put in there, you're going to want to come back and smooth off the edges. One way to do that is just to take some, this is about a 80 or 100 grit sandpaper, and just sand the edges off smooth so the paddles won't catch on anything and it looks a little bit nicer. Now in my case, what I've got is a trim router. So I've put a little round off bit in the trim router and it really will make it look much more professional and it, you can do it pretty quickly. I do recommend using a trim router. You use a face mask because it just makes all kinds of dust.
Okay, we'll flip this over, we'll do the other side, and this base piece here is complete. To attach the back, I'm going to use pocket hole screws. So I'm using a pocket hole jig to make the holes. Here's how I put the pocket screws in after applying a bead of glue along the edge of the board. Now what I showed you is how I attached this back piece to the surface board using pocket holes. So I used two, four pocket holes. You would run a bead of glue along there and then screw your board on. Now I realize that not everyone has a pocket hole jig. If you don't, all you would have to do would be just to simply to drill some holes through your top board and attach it to your board back here. Just remember to run a bead of glue between there before you screw it on. It'll work just fine. Now the next thing you'll need is some way to keep track of where the paddles are and which paddles should be coming out next. I've done that just using this quarter inch aluminum rod that I've attached to these two side pieces and then I cut a one and a quarter inch dowel, drilled a hole in the middle of it. Uh, the hole is a little bit bigger than a quarter inch hole so it slides nice and easily along here. So as the paddles are taken out you can slide that down and you know which paddles are next in order. Um, I'm going to show you how to do these pieces next. So to make your pieces to hold the rod I'm just using some one by two pine here. You're going to make it four and a half inches long uh, but before I cut the length off of here I'm just going to kind of cut the edges off at a 45 degree angle on the one end so that it's kind of rounded on the outside and not it won't poke anybody or snag anything when people walk by it. So we'll do that first. And this doesn't have to be exact. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to be measuring this for exact measurements. There's my four and a half inch line right there. Come back to center. Okay, and that's what your block will initially look like uh, when you cut the first one. Now in my case, I'm actually making four racks, so I had to make several of these. Now we want to drill the holes for our rods. Again, I'm sticking with the same pieces that I made with the one by two, and you just want to drill down toward the edge here to get, your, to get your rod centered in that board. Now, I've got a little bench top drill press here. If you don't, just use a regular drill and just try to be careful to get it as straight as you can. Now, the next thing you'll want to do is determine what the length of your rod needs to be. And if you recall, I said early in the video, this was cut to 37 inches long. And there was a reason for that. Because I thought it would be easy if I had a 37 inches long, and then I could buy a 36 inch rod, and then the rod would just easily fit right in there. Unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to take a little bit of length off that rod, so that's no big deal. I'm just gonna line that up and decide where I want to cut it. Then I'm going to get my hacksaw out and I'll take a little bit of length off the rod. Now you're ready to put your rod on here and it's going to fit pretty snug. So get it started and then take a mallet and just gently hammer that thing on there. Now you've got your rod assembly ready to go. And what you're going to do is position that to where you've got plenty of room for that bead to slide back and forth. And then what you're going to do is just, I'm going to just lightly mark, make sure I'm centered. I'm just going to lightly mark here where my board is. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Because I want to drill holes to attach these and the screws will come up from the bottom this way. 
Um, but I, so I need to know about where the center of that board is. So I will attach this with two screws. So I'm drilling my hole through my plate. Now then, we will come back and reposition our block on the face plate. And we know where it needs to be because we've got that little pencil line. And then I'm just going to take this clamp and just clamp one end of it for now until I get that first screw in. Now I can take my driver. I'm using one and a quarter inch wood nails here. And I will just come from the underneath side where I put those holes. And attach these pieces to the top. Now once I've got that first screw in, I can take these clamps off. Because it'll hold just fine for the other two screws. Now we'll just take a sanding block with some, I think I've got about a 180 grit on here. And I'm just going to round off the edges. I don't want any sharp edges, particularly on the outside where people could walk by and maybe snag their shirt or a child could walk by and bang their head on it. So I'm just kind of smoothing out. It, it almost becomes like a semicircle because I, the way I cut those edges at a 45. So here's what our final paddle rack looked like. We painted ours blue with two coats of outdoor paint. A couple of notes. I moved the slider bar down to the bottom because it seemed to work better that way. And I found a yellow ball that would fit over the bar at Michael's Craft Store. And it looked really nice. It's a wooden ball that I could drill a hole through. Also, we attached the rack to the fence using zip ties. So I brought a drill out, figured out where it would attach to the fence to be level, drilled the holes, and just used zip ties to attach it. As players are waiting to play, and the courts are full, players will start to put their paddles into the rack so they'll be next up to play. When you start this process, this little yellow knob should be all the way to the left, as this is the first paddle. As more and more players put their paddles in, the stack begins to grow longer. But as players now have a court open up, they come in and take their two paddles out if it's two players. And you move the little yellow ball down to the next paddles that should be going in. And that process continues. As the next two players come and take their paddles out, the yellow ball moves down again, and the newer players stack their paddles on the end. At some point, there will be more players coming in from the left-hand side. And as they stack their paddles in, you know who the next player up is because that's where the little yellow ball is. Players continue to take their paddles out. The ball continues to move down. They take more paddles out. The ball continues to move down and newer players waiting to play continue to put their paddles in. But you always know who's next if you move that ball at the appropriate time. Once you get down to the end and all these players are, have now pulled their paddles out, then what you do is you slide the ball back all the way to the left because now this is the first paddle to come out and the whole process starts again. As these two players go in, the ball slides down. These two players go in, the ball slides down. So the critical piece here is to always remember to move this little yellow ball back to the next paddle that should be coming into play. So I hope you found this project of some value. I know if you're pickleball players, you probably did. Don't forget, if you like this video, hit that like button subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.